So right now you should have a basic understanding of some of the core concept of circular motion. In this video I'm going to briefly review some of them and also give you formulas. I'm not going to derive the formulas. For now I'll give you the formulas. Um, watching a video on the derivation will be optional. So centripetal acceleration, which we denote AC, is really a core concept in circular motion. Because remember that if we have something moving in a circle, so if we have an object here that's moving in a circle, its instantaneous velocity has to be constantly changing, even if it's going at a constant speed. So if I would take one snapshot of the speed of this object, and if I would draw that velocity vector, it might look like this. But while the speed remains the same, the direction has to change constantly in order for it to stay going in a circle. And if the direction changes, then we can say the velocity changes. And if the velocity changes, we have acceleration, since acceleration as, is defined as a change in velocity. So remember that centripetal acceleration is a kind of a special kind of acceleration. It doesn't change the speed. It only changes the direction of velocity. And it's required for an object to be able to move in a circle. Our formula for centripetal acceleration is actually two separate formulas. It can be calculated two different ways. First one is v squared divided by r, meaning the square of the velocity divided by the radius of the circle here. And the other way of calculating it is 4 pi squared r divided by the period squared. You should see both of these on your formula sheet. You'll notice that centripetal acceleration is put in these absolute bracket marks on your formula sheet. They're just straight marks that tell us that we don't care if this is a positive or a negative number. And the reason we have to do that is because the direction of the acceleration of course changes at every point as well. It's always accelerating towards the center of the circle so that's not a very interesting fact so we're only going to talk about a uh, numerical value for this. So that's one important formula. The second one we're going to talk about is tangential velocity or sometimes written as centripetal velocity. Again we're going to consider this one with absolute value signs. We know that the direction of that velocity has to be continually changing, but what we're interested in here now is the speed of the object. The speed of an object as it is rotating around in a circle. That formula is given as 2 pi r divided by t. This one, I want you to have a quick look at. You should be able to recognize why it's dependent on these factors. So 2 pi r, you might recognize as being the circumference of the circle. t is the period, or the amount of time it takes to do one complete res revolution. Think about how this relates to velocity as we studied it in kinematics. We previously knew velocity as being a change in distance over a change in time. Well, hey, as an object travels in a circle, the distance it travels is the circumference of the circle and the time it takes is the period of rotation. So that's where this formula can directly be derived from. So that's important formula number two. Now we want to look at centripetal force. Centripetal force is denoted as F sub C and we're going to derive the equation for centripetal force by knowing what force normally is. So normally we've calculated force as being mass times acceleration Basically, if we're talking about centripetal force, we're going to go with mass times the centripetal acceleration. So remember what centripetal force is actually talking about. It's the force required to constantly change the direction of the object so that it stays within the circle all the time. So it has to be this inward pulling force to change the direction of the object so it stays within the circle. So what the force is doing is is it is performing that centripetal acceleration that we talked about above. So we can calculate it just by using our mass times acceleration formula as long as we use the centripetal acceleration. So this one we could rewrite as being mass times v squared over r or we could write it as being mass times 4 pi squared r over t squared. And you'll notice that this 
formula is not on your formula sheet and you don't need it either because you can use f equals ma and always derive it yourself. The last thing I want to talk about is this concept of centrifugal force that you might have heard of before. You may, have, you may come across it in, in even mechanics classes or something like that. It's the idea that something spinning super rapidly in a circle has kind of an outward pull to it. And that's what we call the centrifugal force. In reality, centrifugal force is not a real force at all. It's a fake force. It's an idea that really can be re related to Newton's first law of motion. So Newton's first law says that an object, if it has no forces acting on it, will continue to go in the direction it is going. So if we have an object that is moving rapidly in a circle, at any point in its motion, it would like to continue going in a straight line. It would like to actually fly out of the circle at a tangent to the circle. That's all because of inertia, all because of Newton's first law. However, that gives us the idea or the feeling that something tries to run away from the circle, you might say. So for example, a centrifuge that spins very rapidly, whatever's inside of it gets splattered against the walls of the centrifuge. It feels like it's being pulled away from the center of the circle. Or you may have heard of a centrifugal clutch those are just clutches that spin very fast so that they grab on the exterior walls of the circle. So let me just give you a quick diagram of a centrifugal clutch. A centrifugal clutch is used in places like chainsaws, for example. A chainsaw uses a centrifugal clutch so that when the motor is idling and spinning very slowly, the chain doesn't move. So the motor, or the engine, is attached in the middle of the centrifugal clutch and there's this rotating set of objects, I guess we could call it. I'm going to draw, there's some pivot points and there's kind of some friction pads. Uh, I'll just draw a few of them. Pivot points and friction pads. And now when this whole system gets spinning really fast, this idea of a centrifugal force, which we know is actually just Newton's first law, makes those pads want to move outward. They want to move in a direction actually tangential to their velocity. So it'll be kind of this outward push. And when they push outward, then they engage with this outer disk here. And when it's going fast enough, they'll push hard enough that they grab it. And that's when the chainsaw itself starts to go. So there's actually a lot of lawn equipment and those kind of things that use centrifugal clutches. I just wanted to clarify that the idea of a centrifugal force is really just Newton's first law. We're not going to do any sort of calculations with it. It's not even a real force. So hopefully this solidifies your understanding of some of the basics of circular motion and allows you to use some formulas.